Yo guys, what's going on? Zace is here today with another video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold Wars Alpha, giving you guys a summary on my experience with it, and just having a nice little discussion about it since it was only a two-day event, and give you the information and how I feel about some of the stuff being said about the game right now. In the last two days, I did a ton of recording, but did not get nearly as much content as I wanted to. I honestly thought that all of Sunday was going to be playable. And turns out I woke up at 10 and I only had three hours left in the alpha. And that was pretty discouraging. All the movement stuff I didn't get to make videos on. I did not get to finish every single weapon. I had to half-ass some recordings just because I needed to get recordings for them. I couldn't get good gameplay. So, unfortunately, we do have a bit of a time management error on my part. Just not being able to manage my time well and read things. I can't read. But the alpha lasted, what, 48 hours, I think? I think it was a 48-hour event, and I will say, I think it went smooth. Now, a lot of people are ripping on the games for reasons I don't think are valid, and I'm going to get into that. But for a 48-hour event, I think the servers went very smoothly. I had no server issues at all, none at all, besides the playlist downloading and taking an extra minute or two to download an update. I think everything went flawless on connectivity. Now, I was playing with people on West Coast, and I'm on the East Coast, so obviously there's a problem there, but one thing I will say is when I was on West Coast lobbies, I didn't have that much lag, so that's definitely a plus. I like to see that. The servers are holding up well, and connectivity is improving, that's for sure. Anytime in the past, on past Call of Duties, if I'm playing with West Coast, I'm on a two bar or one bar when there was that, and then on you know an 80 or 90 ping now that we're on to the more advanced stuff and not just little connection bars as a little graphic. So, let's give you my first key takeaway from the alpha. I think the gunplay mechanics and the gunplay, the gunfights, everything surrounding the weapons overall was extremely good. I think the gunplay feels just right. I think the time to kill feels perfect. Now, there's some weapons, such as the Krig 6. That one comes to mind right away. Um, the Hauger, Hauer shotgun, I can't remember how to say it, but the Hauer shotgun is extremely underpowered for a shotgun secondary compared to the Spaz 12 anyway. And there's a couple other weapons that felt a touch un underpowered. The RPD and the Stoner 63 LMGs felt a bit underpowered for LMGs. Um, you know, they're supposed to be pumping out high firepower and they just weren't, they just were not doing that. So besides the, you know, couple things with weapons feeling a bit underpowered that can be fixed easily with a weapon tune, um, the gunplay felt really nice overall. The Type 821, which I have a video on, I can link it up in the top right if I remember, or I'll just put it at the end or something, or you can search it on your own on my channel. Uh, one of the best guns in the game right now just felt really consistent it's not about getting the three shot kill every time it's not about getting an insane three shot kill across the map it's not about doing this and this and that once or twice and getting a sick moment it's about doing it constantly and that's one thing i really liked about some of the weaponry if you can control your recoil and hit your shots um and the type 821 is one of the best weapons to do that with the amount of consistency you feel with that weapon is is just phenomenal Better than any Call of Duty I've ever played with that gun specifically. And I said it in the class video that I made for it. It's easily one of the best guns I've ever used in a Call of Duty. One of the best experiences I've ever had because of the consistency of the weapon. So the gunplay in the game overall felt great. Some weapons need buffed. A couple weapons need nerfed, such as the AK-74U. But other than that, the gunplay felt phenomenal. And it was definitely an improvement over any Call of Duty, really. I think it feels really, really good. So... Let's talk graphics. This is the elephant in the room right now. A lot of people are ragging on the alpha for bad graphics. Number one, it's an alpha. It is an alpha. It's not even the beta. You guys need to understand this is a pre-built version of the game that is not even anywhere close to the final product we're going to see in two months. You guys got to understand, they got all the core game done. They got most of the, the map done. They got you know 90% of what needs done. All the fine-tuning and stuff and working out the little bugs and working out the kings, that all comes now. That comes from the beta as well. I mean, after the beta, those things that may have been slightly tweaked might need tweaked some more or toned back a little bit. The graphics alone 
this isn't even a game that you're supposed to be playing on a PlayStation 4. All of the graphical gameplay you've seen in every single trailer has been recorded on a PlayStation 5. This game is meant for next gen or PCs with good graphics cards. There's been all these new graphics cards coming out such as the 3080, 3090. And these graphics cards are going to be able to take this game to a whole new level once they get their hands on it. So saying that this game is a graphical downgrade from Modern Warfare is accurate. But at the same time, it's an ignorant statement because of the sheer fact that the game isn't even meant for PS4. It is meant for a PS5, the brand new console. So let's keep that in mind. I wanted to point that out is one thing that's really bugging me. Everybody's bitching about the graphics and it's just, it's just not a good thing. Modern Warfare is a completely finished game that's been out for over a year. This has been an alpha that was out for two days. It is just an illogical argument to make and you obviously didn't think past first base if you're making that argument and that is my full and i will be sticking to that argument so another key takeaway is the movement how do i feel about the movement well i'm very very undecided on the movement right now um the whole entire time i was playing i was slide canceling and attempting to double sprint even though there is no double sprint 48 hours into it, I tried double sprinting the whole time just out of force of habit because of the slide canceling mechanic. Now, thankfully, the slide canceling was nerfed just a touch from when those pros and content creators actually first got their hands on it because originally you could just slide cancel and you would get the boost from sliding every single time and it was just nutty. So fixes there just a little bit. The slide, I think the movement on the slide, you get way too much of a boost still. Cameraing is a huge issue with that movement. And there's also the snake slide, which I don't think I'm going to put in the video. If I do, uh, it'll be on screen now of the snake slide. I would have to find it on Twitter somewhere. But it's nasty. There's a snake slide in it. The um, There was kind of a G slide. If you guys are, you know, you know, played the beginning of Black Ops 3, there was a movement called the G slide. There was a one time in the alpha that I did it. And I was just blown away that I got so much of a movement boost so quickly. And it could just be a bug. The E slide, also known as the edge slide, is now back in the game and it feels great. But here's my complaint. When you are edge sliding off a ledge and you're getting that huge momentum boost and then you hit the ground running, you feel like you're carrying a bag of bricks. You feel so slow. You feel like you're running an LMG. There's almost It's almost like there's two different movement speeds in the game. One for the sliding and then one for literally running you slide faster than you run therefore that's why everybody slides it's just not logical it doesn't make any sense you shouldn't slide faster than you're currently running it just to me does not logically make sense you don't get more momentum from hitting the ground and sliding even if you get a running start you'll still be getting slowed rather than having momentum and pushing it forward so i think either the slide needs nerf which would significantly slow down the game or the movement speed needs bumped up 15 percent, something like that so the movement kind of feels clunky since there's two different speeds. You know, there's a couple different things. There's a couple areas on the map where you don't mantle over things. You just run into them and it feels clunky. But the movement isn't terrible. But another key takeaway here, it feels like Call of Duty. And this is a big one, man. If the game doesn't feel like COD, people aren't going to want to play it. Now, there was the argument that this is going to feel like Battlefield now. This vehicle is going to feel like Battlefield Hardline, which in a way it does. But I do want to say that it feels like Call of Duty, and the reason that it feels like Call of Duty is because they've taken a couple things from every single game. The UI interface feels like Modern Warfare. Some of the gunplay feels like Black Ops 4 combined with World War II. Um, there's another point in the game with the edge sliding and some of the sliding that makes you feel like you're playing Black Ops 3 or Black Ops 4. Um, there's a There was something else that reminded me of playing Infinite Warfare. So all of these Call of Duty games that we've played... You get a little bit of everything from this game so far, and this is just the alpha. We have yet to see so many things coming out of this game that are just going to make it feel like more Call of Duty. We haven't even got to look at the Zombies mode yet, which is a classic, classic Call of Duty. So, honestly, it feels like COD, and that's a great step for me. I mean, Modern Warfare feels like just something weird. It feels really great. It's a wonderful game, but with skill-based matchmaking, I feel as Modern Warfare has been completely ruined. This is the first season in Modern Warfare where I haven't completed all my officer challenges. It's the first season that I haven't got a complete battle pass besides season one where I was extremely busy on my own time, so that doesn't count. I haven't been busy this time. Oh, I have been, but you guys know what I mean. I've had time that I could play. I just chose not to and done other things. So 
skill-based matchmaking is our next point. That is the next key takeaway. And my experience with, with skill-based matchmaking during the Cold War Alpha was quite interesting. And some other people had different results that are also skilled players. I consider my, myself a highly skilled player. I can compete at the amateur level in tournaments and everything. I play tournaments. I can compete with the guys. You know, I'm not a pro. I'm not going to beat Scump in a 1v1, but I can beat some amateur players. And with that being said, I knew I was going in a high skill bracket. First game ever, I think I went like 36 and 18, nothing worth talking about. But after that, I started getting high kill games. You know, 34 and 2, uh, 48 and 10. You know, I had a 58 and 10 just yesterday. So I had high kill games. After about 10 or so games, I got to the point where I noticed a big increase in skill-based matchmaking. I'm talking very noticeable. I went from playing Johnny No Nose 21 to playing Johnny. Or I went from playing uh, Fire Pants 9000 to playing Pants. And if you guys don't know the reference I'm making here, it's when you see a long gamer tag that you know is not going to be anybody good compared to a short gamer tag. So if you see my gamer tag, for example, you see aces. It's four letters, it's short, it's sweet, it's an OG tag. You know that person's going to be at least somewhat decent. They kind of know what they're doing. They have an ego to them. If you have a short name in Call of Duty, I automatically assume you're somewhat skilled and you have an ego to you. Now, if you see ace with the case 21, it's just like, that's a weird gamer tag. This guy's probably a noob. I'm going to slay him out. You know, it, there's a, it's just like a mental thing for me personally, someone who's been dealing with skill-based matchmaking for ages. This is just something you pick up on. Short gamer tags mean you're good. It's a short name. It means it's your identifier. Everybody's got to know that name. And if you see aces running around, you're going to think, okay, I might have heard of that guy. He might be good. I might have played with this guy before. He's going to slay me out. Something like that. So I went from seeing, you know, these long gamer tags like Sally No Nose 26, went to seeing Sally and all of these things. I went to seeing all these names and I noticed a crunch. Just a crunch on my skill was really starting to come in like left and right, just, just really crunching down on me. And then something happened. Something happened with skill-based matchmaking where there was an update in the playlist. And what happened was they added hardpoint. They added hardpoint about 2.30 a.m. in the morning, Friday, or it would have been Saturday morning then, but it was Friday night. And I noticed the skill-based matchmaking completely reset during that update. My first game of hardpoint, I went 31-2. and two. The next game of hardpoint, I think I went like 28-5 and five or something. So right off the gate, I noticed the skill-based matchmaking instantly fell off. And I'm not sure if that's from that update, but as you guys figured, it went back up to a high skill bracket pretty much instantly. Not that night, but when I logged on this morning, um, Sunday morning, my skill-based matchmaking was at an all-time high. Every single game had at least two to three players who were going off, and it was just not fun. And it gave me Modern Warfare flashbacks. I want to start to try and wrap this video up because we're already, you know, going on 13 minutes, but... You know, these are like my five major points. Um, I just think skill-based matchmaking will once again ruin this game for the vets. And the vets are the ones you need to keep on. It's such a controversial topic, but my verdict on it every single time is skill-based matchmaking needs to go. Because your content creators, your streamers, your pros, your amateur level players... All of the ones promoting the game. The casuals do not promote the game unless it's to their friends, word of mouth. Okay, that's, you know, 60, uh, that's 60 bucks times five. You know, okay, you get, you get, you know, two, three hundred dollars worth of sales from word of mouth. But content creators who are quote unquote caught partner or sponsored by Activision in some way to play their game, they're in the highest skill bracket. They're promoting your game and all these people that are watching you are seeing you get shit on. And that is not a good look. That makes you not want to play. The game might look fun, but it might not actually be fun for you. And a content creator such as myself who constantly gets worked by skill-based matchmaking, you know, I play the game to get good at it so I have good content, good gameplays. But it affects me mentally when I try to relax and unwind and play some Call of Duty for fun, not for work. So in my mind, skill-based matchmaking is not good for anybody promoting the game, and in my case, I'm one of those people. But if you're a casual player, I am completely for it. If you guys are just casual players, you want to sit down, enjoy some Call of Duty, you want to have some fun on the game, there's no reason every single game you should be loading in with a super sweat that's going to work you every time. I completely agree with that. I think it should be toned back, though. 
I have been saying the last couple of weeks that if I can get one game out of four or five games where I just completely go off, I would be satisfied. If I have at least one or two games per hour that I'm just slaying out and doing amazing, I'd be good with that. And I think everybody would be good with that. You know, if they reduce the skill-based matchmaking on a significant basis off a certain amount of games, I think that's good. It shouldn't constantly be though, sweat, 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 sweat. So my key takeaways were the gunplay was amazing. The graphics were a downgrade, but with the counter argument of it's not optimized for PS4, the movement needs a little tuning, but it can be getting used to if you, you know, want to go a certain way with it. The sliding feels nice, but you know, at times it feels clunky and needs a little tweaking. It feels like Call of Duty, which is definitely a plus, and the skill-based matchmaking is questionable at this point in time. But guys, that's going to do it for my summary of the Cold War Alpha. If you guys played the Alpha, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How was your experience? I know a lot of people are ragging on it, but keep in mind, once again, it's an Alpha build of the game. It is not anything close to the final product. Guys, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the sponsors and equipment in the description below. That's all I got. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm out.